Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Mark Shaw. I'm uh, going to be your host of David Reed Holmes TV for the next few weeks. Uh, we're going to get this out there to as many people as we possibly can. We're going to have a little light-hearted chat to um, some of our 15 franchises around around New Zealand. Uh, today, we're starting it off with Fraser McKenzie from the beautiful Queenstown. Look at that backdrop, people. Hey, Fraser, how you doing, mate? Yeah, good. Thanks. Thanks. Real good. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, can't complain. Join the wee break. Still doing a lot of work at the same time. Family. How's the family and things getting on there? Looks like you've got enough spot in Queenstown to hang out for your isolation. Everyone getting on okay? Yeah, no, everyone's all pretty good. Uh, we're all pretty happy with the weather at the moment. We've had a beautiful last couple of weeks, so it's made life nice and easy to go and play outside and uh, take these times to do the jobs that we've been sort of trying to do for a long time and uh yeah get ourselves all organized really so, no it's been good nice, nice. It's been really good so yeah no, there's certainly some silver linings to the to the isolation and i'm sure there is for you guys being builders you know a bit of time off a bit of time in the office maybe rearrange a few things but yeah just yeah. on that um when we go through these when we have these uh DRH, drh tvs we're going to look at um talking to some of the homes that have been built by some of our franchises. And today we've got one built by you guys in Jack's Point, and I believe you built it in 2018. Is that right? Yes, it was. Um, that was out in uh, Jack's Point, which was one that was meant to be one of our next show homes. Um, it was actually one of our own personal homes as well for ourselves, uh, but during a, a change of plan, which we ended up buying a bigger section, um, is where we are at the moment, we decided to move on um, and sell that property but it um we did still build it to our specifications that we, we were going to do for ourselves and tell me jack's point itself you know did you have your children when you were there it's good 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 place for kids good place to hang out lots going on good it's, community it's, it's really good yeah fantastic spot it's just it's nice it's all day sun um the other beauty is in the winter it doesn't actually get quite as cold as other parts of queenstown if you if people know queenstown quite well um just say for example on the um frankton arm side um going into queenstown gets quite cold and has a bit of a hoar frost but out towards jack's point um it's a much nicer it doesn't get those hoar frosts as bad um still gets cold don't get me wrong gets a little bit icy but it tends to be about two or three degrees warmer um, and it is just lovely calm days um, between from now till sort of November is a beautiful time of year to be out there and summertime is fantastic, but it's just, it is a lovely time. And tell me like, oh, I mean, I've been out there, I've been to one of your show homes, fantastic spot. It, it, from my recollection, it's a pretty quick drive from Franklin. Would that be correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're only about seven minutes. So seven minutes. living out towards Jack's, you've got seven minutes to be at the airport. Yeah, that's fantastic. Having, so, you know, got the new bridge. So the new bridge has been built, which is the, the Quara Bridge. Uh, two lane now. It used to be just a one way bridge, but now it's the two lane, which is awesome. Makes life a lot easier. And the traffic is probably some of the best traffic, easy as an ease to get around the place in the whole of Queenstown at the moment. Excellent. Excellent. I can imagine the traffic's died down a bit at the moment, <laughs> but no <laughs> doubt it'll make a comeback because, you know, let's. Face it, it's an icon destination, just not for international folk, but, for, but certainly for New Zealanders as well. And many New Zealanders building houses down there and having things done for, by you guys, or like holiday yep. houses, or yeah, yeah. We're getting a real mixture um, towards out towards Jack's Point. We've got Hanley's Farms, which is just down the road as well. Uh, it, it was sort of aimed around that retiree, um, but it's actually changed to a lot of young families, a lot of families out there, um, yet a lot of young professionals, and there's also still got a lot of retiree it, it's a real um what we can say it's everything it's not just focused at one group of people um which is quite nice to have that whole mixture uh, for example my folks they, they've moved from kaikoura um, they've moved out there we built a house for them and they've never been so warm in their life coming from kaikoura you'd think they'd be a lot warmer but it's not um down here it's a cooler um dry um so if you're living on the coast, you might get sort of like an easterly breeze, depending on which side of the, uh, New Zealand you're living on. But that cold wind normally drives through and it can be a damp, cold wind. But down here, we just tend to be quite a cool southerly breeze that comes up from down south. But it is it is warm. And the way that we've sort of helped to design our houses to um, be well above what I would believe is code, because um, I don't think code 
is what should be built in Queenstown. So we sort of aim to make sure that we're well above it, um, which moves on to insulation and bits and pieces, which we'll discuss in a minute. Excellent. Just just onto that house, we've got an image here of the of the kitchen. Um, yeah. Which we'll just bring up in a sec. Um, I mean, that's a nice big long table. <laughs> but I'm, yeah. I'm, personally, I'm, I'm the sort of guy that I do a lot of restaurants, funnily enough, and enjoy getting out. And that, that big long table sort of, you know how it's, you know, I see it in a lot of restaurants, people communal dining, but the, is, that a, is that a big thing that's happening? You know, the big, the big, big dining areas and houses these days? Big long tables and, yeah. Um, it is. We've actually used that same table um, and we've got it at, a, out, at our new show home out at Henley's Farm and we use that outside as well now. So yeah. we do find um, entertaining is a big thing in Queenstown. Um, we tend to have a lot of um, dinner parties going around to people's houses and I'll probably say the style of builds that we do tend, tend to be on the average size of around about 240 squares and bigger. Um, we do okay. have do smaller compact ones as well, but that helps by having a, a bigger house, you can have a bigger table, which means you can entertain a few more people. Sure, sure. And I know there's a lot of windows there as well. I mean, for me, yeah. back to what you just discussed before, if I'm in a house with lots of windows, I'm going to go, oh, it's going to be cold in here in winter. Now, I'm assuming there's double glazing. I, I, I'm not one for sort of, how do you keep a house warm with all that glass and those massive mountains sitting in right behind it? So I'll give you a, a, a probably a really quick over, overview of, of the, that little design that you're sort of sitting looking at at the moment. So those windows there, as you look out, uh, if you pictured yourself sitting at the table, at the dining table, and you actually looked out, you actually look right up to the remarkables. Because the remarkables are so steep, um, you can't just have a normal window um, at around about 2.4, 2.2 high. You have to go much higher. So we've gone oh, about gotcha. 3.2 metres high. So when you're sitting at the dining table, you can actually look straight up and you can actually see the tops of the remarkables when you're sitting down. Um, and then with those windows we do, we insulate um, the thermally broken story. Thermally broken, the low E, they've also got a tint on them to get, allow for a bit of privacy. Um, and it's got the argon gas as well. So we make sure that we use the best windows that what I believe, there are better in New Zealand, but this is an aluminium window which does uh, deliver uh, at what I would call is required for the Queenstown environment. Excellent. And, uh, and you've got other bits and pieces which within that house there. We actually rigid air barrier the outside, uh, which is like a ply system. There's a couple of different ways of doing that. We also use a max roughly insulated slab, which that house has an air to water underfloor heating system. Um, and you can sort of see you've got the oak flooring through there as well. Uh, that just helps or allows that to radiate the heat coming through, which is a really nice heat. The other good thing about underfloor heating is that um, concrete as a, as a mass, it, it helps to, um, as I say, it rele releases the energy slowly um, and it, it carries on for quite a long period of time. So you can have underfloor heating, uh, once it's up to a nice temperature, it just radiates the heat and it doesn't take a lot of energy to keep it at that temperature. Compared to if you're using radiators and bits and pieces like this. So sure. each place is uniquely what it's required, but that gets a lot of full day, all day sun. And the way that mm -hmm. that is designed, it's sort of shaped like a capital H, but slightly sprayed open to allow the master bedroom, the entranceway, media room, and the whole living area to get full all day sun as well. Brilliant. That sounds like a nice place. Um, just another image here I've got. Just bring that one up. It's of the exterior. Um, I know there's some, there it is. It's some, uh, is it like that schist work there? That fairly common sort of exterior. And just want to take us through that. You know, I see there's some yep. like, like some of that panelling. Is it cedar or what, what, what's going on on the exterior in this place? And why do you use those particular materials? And also, is it on the side of the garage here? Is it some sort of you know, iron or something? Is it? Yeah, so what a typical house, what we do do a lot of is uh, we use a lot of the stone and whether it's uh, the 200 wide stone or we use a veneer stone, which is about 50 mils. Um, this house here, we use the veneer, which helps with a lightweight system. So it means you don't need a big footing and you don't need a lot of over engineering. Um, and it's more done for our speed, um, slightly cheaper, which is cost effective. Um, and also just it's a, what the client sort of wanted um, because this, they, they like that sort of slim line. 
um, really tight stack stone, which you can still do with the bigger stone, but this is just what the client would, uh, was looking for. Mm -hmm. And the tray on the outside, that's a difficult tray that we use. Uh, there, there's about three or four different types down here um, from different roofing companies uh, that do supply it. And the tray goes back to the old days, um, which back in the day, to have a tray, it, it is quite expensive, but it used to have like a ply roof um, and then you put your tray on it. But this way here, we've, we've actually been able to get away with just using, um, um, you know, wrong, uh, not so this way. Yeah, Perlin's a lot closer at about 450, which means we can get away with having a tray and it's a self-supporting tray, which makes it a little bit more cost effective as well. Um, and the good thing about it is actually, as you can probably see, it rolls down the walls. Um, sure. The good thing about rolling down that walls, it just looks really cool. It, um, we, we keep the same profile on the roof coming down the walls at the same place so that the junction it lines up with each other. Um, and it's just really sort of that architectural sort of flair. And then also the other big thing you probably see is a lot of cedar. We use a lot of cedar, um, yeah. cedar, Siberian larch. Um, we love that sort of alpine, the, the, the natural timbers. Um, the tray is a new thing, which we've been using probably in the last sort of five to seven years. Um, sure. and, and it's growing on because the good thing about the tray is that it's a, a lot easier for maintenance wise. Yeah, I was just going to say that. What's yeah. the maintenance on this sort of stuff? Is, am, I, am I, you know, the cedar, do I need to sand it back every year or what, what's the goal? Is it painted or just, you know? Is it no, it, no, every, it depends which one you want to use. So we use um, either the Dryden's or we do the, the Resin Wardex, which tend to be the, the better ones for the environment down here. There are other types of walls as well, um, but they've just been around and, and um, we really enjoy using those products, which our painters use a lot of. And with them, they're both sort of, it's an oil which then penetrates into the house. I'm sort of using it on, on our place here as well. And you don't have to, you can just give it a bit of a wash uh, once a year. And then if you want to top up a coat, probably you can get away with every three to four years, three years. Oh, yeah. um, it will fade. Don't, don't think it's going to stay looking the rich golden color that you, that there was, cause that was a natural color that was on there, but it will change yeah. as the days and the years and it will start you know lighten up a little bit but you don't it's one of the things we don't have to feel that you have to keep doing it every year if you sure. want to it's your choice but you can sort of get away three to four years and the more oil you put on it the longer it lasts and the, um, the stronger the color stays looking yeah excellent now i've been doing a bit of reading about passive homes like i had no idea what a passive home is to be honest with you is this particular build one and if not, even so, could you just you know and give us a bit of a breakdown on what it is a passive home? Yeah, so passive home is what they use over in Europe. Um, it's what almost every home, I'm pretty sure, runs off. Um, so when you're actually building a house, it has to comply. New Zealand, we don't have these rules regulations over here. It's more all about just building to to code. Um, so that house wouldn't comply with passive, but it is well above. Uh, what code is over here? So we're using six for two framed walls, which is um, one forty walls. You know, use six for two, but anyway, one forty walls. Uh, traditionally, is is a is a, a ninety mil frame wall, which is a lot skinnier, and then depends where you are. There, some people do use the seventy five mils walls, which means that it's going to be thinner insulation you're going to get in there. But once you go to that one forty wall, you can get pretty much your ceiling bats put into your wall, um, wow. and then we up spec the ceiling bats, so we normally use an R5, which is a lot higher. It's a, a lot denser as well. Um, and uh, to New Zealand's code, I think it's only like 3.8, 4. But we can really crank that up to fives. And that, all those little things benefit it. And then using the rigid air barrier, which is your plywood system or chipboard system, some sort, depending on which one you want to use. Uh, that also helps with the bracing. It's about nine mils normally I use. Uh, you can get six mil, but I, I think the nine mils are better stuff. And that helps to really strengthen up that house. And we use LVL, which is a very strong timber. The good thing with down here, it keeps um, straight and stable. Um, we have used Oregon in the past, and we do still use it at the bottom plates and bits and pieces, but it's just, unfortunately, we do have the extremes of hot in the summer and then very cold, and timber doesn't like that. It will seem to do its natural movement. But we found with the LVL, um, or therefore, that it keeps itself nice and straight. It's really good. Great. Just um, 
Like it sounds like a good place to live. Um, how, how how far to go skiing? How long? How how far is my drive to go skiing? And I'm guessing I can just go for a mountain bike out the back door, and and also yeah, well, walk. It, but how far is the remarks coronet? There's the remarks just there, and <laughs> then you got coronet peak, which is looking from here. So that's the the, the the road going up to the remarkable ski field just here, getting down the bottom, and then out yeah. in the distance, that's coronet peak. So that's Frankton area down below sure. which is um a beautiful little spot and to get to both mountains you're probably talking about 20 25 minutes uh, depending on who's driving obviously um certainly so yeah. it, fantastic it is we we're close to a lot of things drone is not that far away um the hub in frankton mm -hmm. here to me is it's a sunny spot it's nice and warm it's central you've got the airport you've got the shopping the, the supermarkets um, it offers so much here, and and then you've also yep. got this, um, the ski fields now doing the downhill mountain biking. You've got mountain biking in town. Oh my goodness, you've got golf courses. It, it's just Queenstown is offering during these tighter times. It offers so much in such a little area. Obviously, you can't go out there and do these things at the moment, but normally we can yeah. get out there. And well, when we come right, it, you know, sounds like a yep. good place to be hanging. Um, yep. Just to you know, if I, you know, how long, if I, it's like, so I'm sitting at home, I want a new house, I want a new house in Queenstown. So from the day I sign my contract to the day I hand over, what sort of time period are we talking? You know, how long is it going to take? Yeah, that's a really good question, I, I, mate. Obviously, it depends on the, the yep. size and type of house that I'm getting built. Yep. Just a you know, rough estimate on... I'll give you, know, you a really rough one here because it's, it's a question sometimes I've had... Some go pretty quick, then sort of yeah. five to six months. That's a build time, a uh, build. But then mm -hmm. you're planning on average is minimum six months. So that's a design. So that's the concepts through to working drawings, through to engineering, and you've got to get into council. Now that's going real quick. Now those doesn't really happen. However, no. if you're using a standard plan, it can work that way. But we, uh, what we'd use is we'd do spoke plans. Um, the yep. reason why I say it is it is required in Queenstown. Um, some people disagree. That's their choice. I'm just using my my, my opinions here. Um, the thing is, is that we go we do have wind, and if you are facing your house the wrong way, and you're not allowing that sun to come into your house, you're going to have a cold house in the winter time, or even in the summertime. Yeah, um, I still see houses with like on a day like today. I've actually you know still see chimneys going chimneys where people got their fires going because they're heating because they're obviously not getting enough heat inside the house. So it's it's not that warm it's probably about 14 degrees 15 degrees but people are getting fires going and uh it, that concerns me because if they took a little bit of time in designing their house shaping it so you can maximize trying to get a little bit of that heat in there you've got to be careful because you don't want to overheat your house in the summertime but you want to get a little bit of heat in there in that summertime uh, in the winter time and then obviously a bit of shading as well but that comes down to the design and that's why i like to take those into consideration the wind the sun um coming in and off the driveway, making sure that it's in a safe spot because you don't want your driveway at the front of your house or when you're driving past where you're looking in at you. There's all these little things you've got to take in consideration. So that's why I say if you find your section, it's really important to probably then design a house, but you can use a house or a design that uh, just say you found a design you like, but then just move it a little bit. You can extend yeah. it, make it smaller, open it up, whatever we can do. do that. Yeah, yeah, so... That's really important. That, that comes down to experience in the town. Um, we've lived in the town for 15 years and with living in almost every area of Queenstown, knowing which way the wind's going to be blowing, which way the sun comes up when it sets. And that's all really important stuff, um, especially if you're trying to live off the grid. I've seen yeah. some people trying to buy in a place where it gets a permafrost in the middle of winter and trying to live off the grid. And I'm like, yeah, you might have to want to probably re look at where you're actually um, wanting to move to. Um, sure. And the hills, hills actually aren't too bad. Um, hills allow for a bit of an elevation, nice review. But you also, where we live just here, we're actually in a little um, thermal, thermal area, uh, layer. So we, we get the frost comes down below us, but up here we're almost tend to be about two degrees warmer than down below. But then if you go about another, I don't know, a couple of kilometres uphill with that, you know, the K, then suddenly it drops down again. So we're in sort of this little unique area. And there's quite a few areas around Queenstown that are in that um, that, that location. So, yeah, looks so good. Yeah, that, that'll take time. And, you know, you've got to be, sounds like you're, you know, going to be quite 
you know, we want to get the right site and build the right house, right house on the right site, and that's all going to take time, council, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, that's that's good stuff. Um, I suppose we'll just we can wrap it up now. But it's just a quick question, you know, obviously it's it's trying times for everyone. You can't have meetings, can't do that. You guys are still working, I'm assuming. You know, how you're dealing with your clients? You, I don't know, doing storyboards or getting together, getting together ideas that they're you know taking starting the process, you know, is that still possible even if I'm sitting at home? I mean, I'm sure there's some stuff you can knock off when you're at home. Yeah. So at the stage, we are still open. Um, our show home's closed, obviously, due to um, not allowed to be there. But we are still accessible by email, phone calls. Um, we've got Carol and Justine, our consultants. Um, they're busily, busy beavering away there, getting some plans put together, working with the architects who are still at home, obviously got access to doing what they need to do at home. Um, so at this stage, right now, I think is a really good time if anyone has been thinking about possibly yeah. building. Um, two things, a, interest rate's about as good as it's ever going to get. Um, obviously, we're going through a bit of a dip at the moment. So I think coming out of this, people are going to be a little bit hungrier, um, keen to be moving forward possibly, um, because there's some people that um, obviously unfortunate circumstances that might have lost their jobs and so forth. But it, and I think out of all of this, it will spur forward as being quite a, an, um, a, a good economy to, to be actually building and uh, yeah. doing the opposite. And we're definitely not at the, the peak, what we, what we, if people were thinking that we were. I think we'll, we'll, you know, we've chopped it right back down a little bit. Um, so it's a really good time. It's a stable time. And don't get me wrong, there is all sorts of stuff going on with the economy and so forth. But if anyone's thinking... Um, it is a fantastic time building. Um, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Design I mean, stage. It, that's it takes what I was thinking. Time. Yeah, if you're sitting at home, it's like what better time to start thinking about what to have in your kitchen, what to have, you know, yeah. do we want, you know, this, that, do we want a swimming pool, do we want this, you know, where do we, you can still look at sections, I'm assuming, you know. Absolutely. That's yep. right. So, yeah, like, there's so many things you can do online. Yeah. Sorry, mate. Yeah, yeah no, there's so, so much it, you can do it, online. It, you know, been able to. Yeah, heaps to do online. I've had friends that are doing virtual walkthroughs on their property because they're trying to sell it. And that's working out pretty easy just to walk through with the you know, camera on the phone. Um, this is definitely not a time where if people are thinking to just go home and sit on their hands, um, I would say it's, it is a really good time um, to be out there doing something. We've, we've got at the stage a um, you know, really tight group of architects and draftees. They're pretty keen, looking for more work. Um, so definitely a good time to be reaching out and uh, asking the questions. Um, and because it, it takes so much time it, to do a, a full set of concepts through to working drawings to getting that it almost takes 12 months to be honest there we go so over this period of time because you've got to still get it through counts or you've got to engineering and all that sort of stuff it, it takes a long time however don't get me wrong there can be quicker plans you can speed things up but you really always say take that time get it done right get it done to right. what you think is going to suit you, you and your family um, or yourself or whoever and just yeah Nail it, nail it the first time. All right, cheers, Fraser, and thanks everyone for tuning in or taking a look on Facebook or wherever else you might be looking at it. Just look, if you need any more information from David Reed Holmes, go to www.davidreedhomes.co.nz. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, everyone.